I'm speaking to you today from Camp David. Because the atmosphere here is a bit more informal than everyday Washington, I thought it would be a good opportunity to think and reflect with you about those crucial foreign policy matters so much in the news lately. It's also a chance to do something I've wanted to do throughout the course of these events, and that's share some personal thoughts with you, to speak to you, the American people, from the heart. I realize you must be disappointed and probably confused with all the furor of the last couple of weeks. You must be asking, what were we doing in the Middle East? What was our policy? Where was it wrong? Were we engaged in some kind of shenanigans that blew up in our face? I can understand if these are the questions you're asking, and I'd like to provide some answers. First of all, the Middle East is critically important to our nation's security. Right now, it's a major trouble spot that could easily set off the sparks of a wider conflict. Much of our effort has been aimed at stopping terrorism, putting an end to the bombing of innocent civilians and the kidnapping of hostages, especially our own citizens, and bringing about an end to the bloody war between Iran and Iraq. When word came to me that individuals in Iran, including some members of the government there, had asked through an intermediary in a third country for a meeting with a representative of our government, I said yes. And even though these were responsible elements in Iran that might be able to assist us in stopping the violence and possibly helping us get back the hostages being held in Lebanon, there was a risk involved. But I believe then and believe now there was a greater risk in doing nothing, of not trying. So I gave the order to proceed. We had some notable success. There was some reduction in terrorism, and three of our hostages were released one at a time, and others were about to follow. Then someone in the government of Iran leaked information about our contacts with Iran to a newspaper in Lebanon. You know the rest. This effort to establish a relationship with responsible moderates in Iran came to light and was broken off. But I think you can see the purposes behind our policy. To end the war in the Middle East, to prevent Soviet expansionism, to halt terrorism, and to help gain release of American hostages. But now I want to speak to you about something else. Not the policies themselves, but how they were carried out. And while we are still seeking all the facts, it's obvious that the execution of these policies was flawed and mistakes were made. Let me just say it was not my intent to do business with Khomeini, to trade weapons for hostages, nor to undercut our policy of anti-terrorism. And let me say again, I know the stories of the past few weeks have been distressing. I'm deeply disappointed this initiative has resulted in such a controversy, and I regret it's caused such concern and consternation. But I pledge to you, I will set things right. That's what I'm doing now. When our Iranian initiative came to light, I spoke to you from the Oval Office and explained it. When revelations regarding a transfer of money from Iran to those attempting to fight the Sandinista government were reported to me, they were immediately shared with you and the Congress. I then appointed a distinguished, independent board, chaired by former Senator and Ambassador John Tower, to review our National Security Council staff apparatus. And to ensure a complete legal inquiry, I urged the appointment of an independent counsel. They used to be called special prosecutors, and that's what they are. They just changed the title. And finally, I have stated we will cooperate fully with the Congress as they undertake their proper review. If illegal acts were undertaken in the implementation of our policy, those who did so will be brought to justice. If actions in implementing my policy were taken without my authorization, knowledge, or concurrence, this will be exposed and appropriate corrective steps will be implemented. I will continue to make all the facts known surrounding this matter. We live in a country that requires we operate within rules and laws, all of us. Just cause and deep concern and noble ends can never be reason enough to justify improper actions or excessive means. In these past six years, we have done much together to restore the faith and confidence and respect of our people and our country. We've done so not by avoiding challenges or denying problems, but when confronted with these problems, dealing with them directly and honestly. We will continue to do so. Until next week, thanks for listening, and God bless you. Yeah.